hello, everybody. Appreciate you carving out the time for the next installment in our uh, webinar series. Today, we're going to be focusing on uh, integration between Zendesk and Dynamics 365. When I say T365, we're specifically talking about uh, the customer engagement side of things, and that could be everything from, from sales to customer service to, to marketing, field service, project service automation, everything that, that falls underneath that customer engagement umbrella. So really appreciate you all carving the time out to, to join us today. Again, my name is Luke Steckler, and We'll show you some uh, some some pretty cool things today on how you can uh, kind of how these systems can complement and work uh, together with one another, and definitely get you out of here uh, well in advance of our uh, of our scheduled time. It's so kind of a quick agenda for the day. Um, we'll look at some integration scenarios between the two. You know, what are some of the the common circumstances where people are integrating Zendesk with D three sixty five? We'll obviously show a high level demo, and we'll give some some considerations, some things to think about. Um, when you are looking to integrate some of these products um, with either you know each other, um, other other things to, to evaluate, and obviously uh, some Q and A throughout as well. So looking at again the Zendesk D three sixty five integration, I think one of the first things to look at is uh, what needs to be integrated and what doesn't need to be integrated. So this will, this will probably make a little bit more sense when we dive into our demo and and see some actions, some things moving um, within the environment, but. Uh, some common integration scenarios that needs to uh, to keep the two systems in sync with one another. So, for example, you know, um, updating accounts in D365 to uh, to orgs in Zendesk, or vice versa. Same things with contacts and users and cases and tickets. So, you know, how those those fields and those entities are defined on the the dynamic side, as opposed to how they're defined on the Zendesk side, and keeping the the data between those two in sync. But then also looking at you know visibility, making visibility um, accessible and easily from one side to the other. We'll show some some instances on that side of the fence too. And uh, some of the, the products we'll be looking at today. So first off, we'll be looking at a Smart Connect, which will kind of be the, the engine powering the, the true integration between these two systems. And then we'll show PopDoc, which really kind of comes in on the ability to, you know, again, areas that we don't need to integrate, but we want that data to be live in real time. And we want to be able to, to interact with it a few different ways. So again, that'll, that'll make more sense when we kind of dive in and see some of these in action. But, but Smart Connect has been a you know, well-versed, well in the market. It. Um, we've done a really good deal of, uh, of integrations between Zendesk and D365, and, and we can, you know, that can truly be a, a bi-directional integration. So whether we're sending data from Zendesk to D365 or backup, um, wherever it's originating from, keeping those two systems in sync, very common scenario, and that can be uh, those bi-directional integrations can run on a, on a variety of different schedules. We can have some real-time integrations. We can have you know, integrations triggered on on changes or, or schedules. Maybe we want that to update, you know, every minute on the minute, every five minutes. Again, we've got a lot of functionality, a lot of flexibility between that to match your organizations, your processes, and and how you're really utilizing these two applications together with one another and looking at what needs to be updated. And obviously, um, you know, sometimes too, we have individuals that need to integrate Zendesk with an ERP platform. Uh, so that's another common scenario. And again, we can look at that, schedule that, and to kind of break those things down based on, based on our overall use cases. So let's dive into a, to a demo to kind of bring this to life and look a little bit further at everything that I've, that I've talked about so far. All right. Let me pull. There we go. All right. So we're going to start out inside of Zendesk. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new organization. And we're going to go ahead and call that Burgers Plus. And this will be our uh, the burger chain we're utilizing as our uh, kind of org in our, uh, our, our base today. So let's go ahead and add in a new user and we'll call him. Uh, Call him Bobby. Oops. All right, so we've got got some new users, got a new org, and we'll go ahead and and fire up a new ticket. So Bobby had uh, some of the the buns they ordered for their from their supplier weren't pre-sliced, so they're typically pre-sliced. So we'll go ahead and enter enter this new data inside of Zendesk as our kind of a, our core. And again, we could could flag this as maybe it's an incident. Call it normal priority. 
I have tons of flexibility on this side of the fence. And again, go ahead and submit that. And that'll kind of be our, our baseline for some data to funnel the, the initial side of, of the integration. So we've got that. Make sure that ticket came through. There we go. Okay, perfect. So we've got that new ticket created. We've got a new user, a new organization. All that's come in on the Zendesk side. So now, a uh, very common scenario is, again, people are getting cases and tickets. They're utilizing Zendesk as that ticketing support gateway and then feeding that back to a, a core CRM like D365. So typically, Zendesk is the one that's originating some of the data. Um, that certainly could start on the D365 side as well, but this is certainly probably the, the more common uh, case. So let's dive into our uh, first our sandbox. and We're going to look at some of the maps that we have set up to go between Zendesk and Dynamic CRM. So I'm going to go ahead and pull open first our account maps. We've got maps, again, built out to map you know, again, orgs in Zendesk to, to create new accounts on the CRM side. We've got ones for contacts, ones for tickets. And the beauty is when I when I pull these open, we can see uh, the records that we've created. And I'll touch on a couple things inside this map that really make that uh, powerful. And then we'll run these and, uh, and see these going into our CRM environment. All right. So the first thing I like to show off here, so again, we're taking data from our kind of our, again, our REST APIs. So we're calling that Zendesk API directly, sending that to CRM. But we're also doing a little bit of, of validation before we even send that data, looking at the accounts that already exist in CRM before we go ahead and create new accounts. So within this integration, again, we're creating accounts. You saw the separate ones we have for contacts and, uh, and tickets and cases, and we'll touch on those in just a moment as well. But this is pretty powerful because we're taking the, the new data we get from Zendesk, cross-referencing it against CRM for any duplicates before we truly go ahead and integrate that. And if I go ahead and preview, I'll be able to see the, the accounts that we've got in our Zendesk environment that we haven't integrated over yet to CRM. And if I scroll to the bottom, looking at some of the new ones that have come in here, there we go. We've got Burgers Plus. That was just entered today. So that's that's been there. So I'm going to go ahead and you know, while I'm in here, I can go ahead and, and run this map. We'll see all that process in real time. Uh, updating our CRM environment. So we'll run the one for not only our accounts, but we'll look at contacts and, uh, and cases as well. Uh, and really started to see these come in. So we'll give these a, a quick run here, and then we'll circle back to CRM to see the, the records that we created on that side. So you can pump through a, a wide variety of records, and you've also got a lot of flexibility and the ability to kind of, you know, we've, for, for this demo, um, haven't chained these together. Cause it's, um, we're really kind of showing, you know, each different phase within this process of, okay, accounts. Once we've got those accounts created, then we're going to go ahead and integrate contacts. And again, once those are created, we are going to integrate tickets. But these could be completely linked together so that you've got one integration running and then Smart Connect is handling all of that automation together. So in, in a real world scenario, um, you definitely wouldn't have to be running these manually. Um, but can we do that kind of in this demo just to really spell out what's going on behind the scenes? But traditionally, this would be just a, a single map that's been created and then those are all linked together and all being automated within a, within a single environment. So I'll pull these open and then I'll, again, I'll kind of show we can blur the lines on integration between these two um, before we, we kind of circle back and see the information that we, that we pulled up on that side of the fence. There we go. So I've got my contact map and I'm just going to click around on that side of the fence. Get those humming. So that runs perfect. I'm going to go ahead and pull up tickets as well. And once this one gets running, then we'll be good to go. All right, so kind of again, everything we're looking at here is some of that true integration. Yet sometimes we need to blur the lines on integration reporting. So that's again, true updates, what I call creates updates and deletes between two systems. That's where Smart Connect's an awesome fit. But here, jumping into our CRM environment, we've got uh, what is really a pop doc widget 
displaying real-time Zendesk data inside D365. And again, this could go vice versa. We could show some, some D365 data back in the Zendesk side, but it, it isn't integrated, but we're making this data actionable and live. So we've got our Burgers Plus account, and I've got the ability to see current tickets that have come in. So we've got some on, again, bell peppers and tomatoes, and, and I've got one here on lettuce that's a new ticket. And if I want to, to dive into some deeper data on that, I can not only see comments. So again, what everything that, that the Zendesk API is enabling us, you know, the, the levels that are below tickets, so this is where I can dive in deeper, see collaborators, and again, all the different kind of, again, subcategories that might fall under under tickets, those can be accessible. And again, this is real-time point from the Zendesk API. And one of the, the beauties as well of the Zendesk API is it gives us a lot of flexibility. So I can actually take action from inside of D365 directly on Zendesk in real time. So if I wanted to add a comment, I could do that. So this is one about a lettuce recall with E. coli. So that's definitely not a, uh, a normal case. That's a very uh, urgent one. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, so I'm going to pull up, whoops. Let me go, we've got status. And if I dive back under priority, there we go. So we're just going to update this to say it was from new to, to pending. So these updates will now be made in uh, in real time between D365 and between CRM. So that's pretty powerful, and we have the ability to uh, to go ahead and really update data from one platform to another in real time through these widgets. Really powerful functionality. So again, that's that's specific to Zendesk. That's specific to their API and some of the functionality that, that they allow us to. But we can make this data again visible, actionable, and truly integrated. So we had a variety of those integrations we processed before running in the background. And if I want to go ahead and in this CRM pull open my uh, my Burgers Plus account, which is where our integrations are linked out between Zendesk and CRM. We'll go ahead and pull up that account. We can see the, the new records that we created after entering those on the Zendesk side. Give that a minute to load up. Might have been, there we go. All right, so there's again, the, the, those are the accounts that we created. We've had our, our contacts on there as well, along with the uh, the tickets that we created. And those might even be uh, be still humming through. So I see this was just created uh, just created a little bit a little bit ago, and I wonder if our accounts and tickets aren't still coming through on the integration side. Maybe if I refresh, we'll see if we've got. If I dive in, take a look at cases. Those ones are still still humming through on the integration side. So so there we go. So that's just a really cool uh, example of kind of showing showing some of these things working in conjunction with one another for not only true integration but also the ability to to blur the lines on that when we need to make data data truly actionable. So some, some things to definitely consider when you're looking at integrating these two are, you know, what entities and objects do you really need to integrate? What data needs to move? Again, kind of going back to what creates updates and deletes do we need to do, as opposed to what data just needs to be displayed, what data do we need to make actionable? So we maybe we just want to keep accounts and contacts in sync between the two, but we're going to use you know, a pop doc widget to, to simply display those inside of D365 and make that data actionable. That could be great. When you're looking at you know, any integration, you're going to be diving in on uh, some of the mapping, and, and that's relatively simple between these two. You know, it's not a uh, in most instances, in most projects, a, a very complex mapping, but you know, errors certainly can and, uh, and, and will occur, whether it's in testing or production. So that's why utilizing a, a, a tool like Smart Connect rather than, uh, than Custom Dev or some other platforms can really be uh, really be slick in making that not only easy for 
initial implementation, but ongoing maintenance that if or when errors occur, those can be easily identified and corrected and Smart Connect can, can easily automate some of the notifications and emails around that. Um, ERP integration is again another one that we're seeing with a lot of individuals, a lot of folks we're utilizing Zendesk on some of those need to not only connect to their CRM environment, but their ERP as well, and that might even be again bi-directional, bringing back some 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 financial data to have that accessible for some of those individuals on the support side. And again, that could be truly created, updated, deleted. You know, utilizing something like Smart Connect, or we can just display that with some of those PopDoc widgets. They just need access to certain certain areas like like credit limits or other applicable fields from the ERP and you know, support options. That's one of the biggest things is when you're looking at bringing these things together. If you run into hiccups or questions or areas, you know, what what support do you have available to make sure that you can get those done? And and you know, we like to make that easy uh, on our side with uh, unlimited support for both PopDoc and Smart Connect. So I hope I've given you a a few different kind of scenarios and showed you a few things today. Again, we told you it would be a a quick high level to kind of see. Um, Initially, what's possible between between these two platforms? Obviously, if you want to dive in uh, deeper and have thoughts or questions or feedback specific to to what you're working on, obviously don't hesitate to to reach out. That's what we're here for. There's my direct contact info. But appreciate everyone carving some time out of their day to see a little a look at Zendesk and D365 and and how those two can can really be be brought together to make.